And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a man to test the will and goodness of a free people. So God made a dictator. God said, I need a man who failed in everything but theft and broken promises to live in a golden palace and convince the poor he serves their needs. So God made a dictator. God said, I need a wicked man to lead the common folk with hatred and fear. So God made a dictator. God said, I need a corrupt man who is above the law and immune from justice. So God made a dictator. God said, I need a man who will use violence to seize power. So God made a dictator. God said, I need a man whose followers will call black white, call evil good, and call criminals hostages. So God made a dictator. God said, I need his political party to obey without question, and the press fear his wrath. So God made a dictator. God said, I need a cruel man who uses his power and position to punish and harm his opposition. So God made a dictator. God said, I need a man who breaks the faith of even his most godly followers and leads them to idolatry, place him above me. So God made a dictator. And then God said, I sent this man to test you, and until you cast him down, you have failed. So God... Wednesday, the 13th of March, 2024. They're currently having a debate. Uh, worry. A session as to whether they should ban TikTok. What's interesting about that is that uh, some Republicans who were literally really vehemently against TikTok for political reasons uh, are now supporting it. And strangely enough, and this is where some I'm trying to get my head around as we uh, head into election 2024, two crazy things have happened just literally uh, in the past few hours. Uh, first of all, during Jim Jordan's circus uh, with uh, Robert Herr, uh, the Dems decided just to play the truth, uh, principally. Uh, reels and reels and reels, a former guy, Diaper Don, just making himself look like a total idiot, using his own words in compilation cuts. Uh, I don't know whether the average person who follows Trump has an IQ, which is whatever, uh, but... I don't believe that even the most ardent Trump supporter now thinks that something Trump said maybe two months ago, uh, two weeks ago, or two days ago, is uh, he didn't say it. He's come to the conclusion their memory must be so small that he can say uh, it's AI. He didn't say it. And uh, they've forgotten that, uh, uh, wow, they didn't want to have TikTok. Uh, as I said, I'm just confused. Probably committed a verbal slip or two during the interview. And I'm not sure any of that matters. Because when the interview was over, Mr. Herr completely exonerated President Biden. And then there is Donald Trump. What kind of man bungles not one, but dozens of opportunities to avoid criminal liability? What must that say about his mental state? Here, too, the record speaks for itself. One of the great memories of all time. James Webb. I don't remember the names. I don't remember the name. Victor Orban. Did ever, anyone ever hear of him? He's the leader of Turkey. By the way, they never report the crowd on January 6th. You know, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley is in charge of security. Three years later, lady, lady, how about that? Did you actually have a one-on-one -on -one with Comey then? Not much, not even that I remember. I don't like Pesitos. We have languages coming into our country. We have nobody that even speaks those languages. They're truly foreign languages. Nobody speaks them. Saudi Arabia and Russia will repeat to oh. I have a really good memory. Your next wife was a woman by the name of Marla Maples. That's right. Do you recall what years you were married to Ms. Maples? Um, it's called like up here and it's called memory and it's called other things. So you don't remember saying you have one of the best memories? I, the I don't remember that. And Putin, you know, has so little respect for Obama that he's starting to throw around the nuclear war theory. You heard that nuclear. We have to win in November or we're not going to have Pennsylvania. They'll change the name. And I talked to Putin. A lot. Did you, ask, did, you ask, did, did you ask him that? I don't remember that. I, you know, I saw that this morning. I don't remember asking him that question. Does it have a good memory and all that stuff? Like a great memory. For 20 years, they were fighting ISIS. I defeated ISIS in four weeks. And we did with Obama. We won an election that everyone said couldn't be won. I'm not cognitively. And you know what? When I am, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to be the first people. I know my people, you'll say, all right, Trump, you did a good job. Get the hell out of here. That's it. That is a man who is incapable of avoiding criminal liability, a man who is wholly unfit for office, and, who a, man, and a man who, at the very least, ought to think twice before accusing others of cognitive decline. 
Happening today in Capitol Hill, the House is set to vote on a bill that would crack down on TikTok, the social media app, this morning as TikTok's CEO attempts to lobby the Senate. Join us with more Tech Policy Center Director at the Heritage Foundation, Kara Frederick. Kara, good morning. Hi, Steve. Okay, so what is going on? Because uh, it sounds like it's, it probably can pass the House, but in the 11th hour, suddenly some Republicans are going, you know what, I'm not so sure about this. Yeah, so this has been really interesting. So it sailed out of the House Energy and Commerce Committee 50 to 0 last week. That was remarkable. A lot of this process has been kept under wraps, so TikTok couldn't really mount that extensive lobbying effort that they're very famous for. They sort of punched down other attempts to uh, contend with the TikTok and the Chinese Communist Party ownership question there. But yes, it looks like there there's some sort of consternation. I think if people actually read the bill, they pay attention to the letter of the potential legislation, they're going to be mollified. They're going to understand that all this bill does is ask ByteDance to sever ties with the Chinese Communist Party, allow TikTok to become an American company, and if it doesn't, then it faces a prohibition on app stores and web hosting mm -hmm. services. Very, very simple. The choice is clear. Cut your ties with the CCP, and you can continue to operate as normal. I think that's getting lost in a lot of the, you know, the, the swirling uh, lobbying, a lot of the influences that are happening externally, but I, I believe that Congress members need to stick with the facts, understand what the bill does, and understand that this is right. foundational. This is low-hanging fruit. We should be able to keep the Chinese Communist Party out of the pockets of our children. Simple as that. Well, absolutely, and a bunch of Republicans have been for a ban or for divestiture for a long time, so it's Kind of weird that they're doing a 180. Uh, you know, ultimately, it will probably pass the House. The big question is if it is ever brought up to the Senate. Uh, stay tuned for that. Very interesting as well that uh, on the day that Ken Buck decided he had enough, and uh, well, uh, Mr. Hur literally got rinsed. Uh, Jim Jordan in the chair. Uh, Fox have decided that they need to have guests that are coming on to talk about dog poo. I kid you not. Trafficking and become a prostitution activist. I spoke to Sky earlier today. Watch. Sky, it's great to see you again. Remind me why you hate men. The answer to that right here in this, under this tray, to answer that. So what this is, is as you can see, this is dog poop. <laughs> President Biden sat for an interview with you uh, over two days for approximately 10 hours. Is that right? Uh, a little over five hours, Congressman. Over two days. Correct. You know, that's in sharp contrast to a guy who did not sit for an interview uh, when the Mueller investigation took place, that was Donald Trump, did not sit for an interview when he was impeached in this committee room by the Judiciary Committee, did not sit for an interview uh, when the second impeachment occurred and he was invited to sit for an interview for his role in January 6, and did not sit for an interview in the January 6 uh, classified, in the January 6 case or the classified documents case. Chairman also has not sat for an interview in his own subpoena, but Joe Biden has. I now want to turn you to the transcript and day one, page 47. You said to President Biden, you have appear to have a photographic understanding and recall of the House. Did you say that to President Biden? Those words do appear on page 47 of the transcript. Photographic is what you said. Is that right? That word does appear on page 47 of the transcript. Never appeared in your report, though. Is that correct? The word photographic? That does not appear in my report. I now want to show you and play a video of what is absolutely not photographic. In the failing New York Times by an anomalous, really an anomalous, gutless, we are a nation that just recently heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will repeat oh. I hope they now go and take a look at the oranges, the oranges of the uh, uh, investigation. And I watch our police and our firemen down in 7-Eleven, down at the World Trade Center. And we did with Obama. We won an election that everyone said couldn't be won. This is the very definition of totalitarianism. And let me begin by wishing you a beautiful look. Do you remember this? Do you remember? God bless the United States. The windmills are driving them crazy. They're driving 
They're driving I'm the, the whales, I think a little batty. I'm and I went to Puerto Rico expired. and I met with the president of the... Ver the um, gentleman yields back. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from North Carolina. Leaving Congress at the end of next week. I am, yes. I'm, I'm resigning my seat and, and creating a vacancy um, in my district. Why? Well, everywhere I go in Colorado, Dan, I hear that people are not happy with Trump and they're not happy with Biden. And uh, I think we need to change our electrical, electoral laws here. Um, and I have a passion for that. And I'm going to leave and I'm going to find the right organization to join. And I'm going to start working on that issue. We have to have better candidates up and down the ballot, not just president, but Senate, House, uh, local offices. We've got to find better ways to elect candidates and bring America together. You already had announced that you were going to not run for re-election. Why leave now and leave a vacancy in an already very narrow majority for your party? Yeah, because it's it, to me it's important to get in the mix of this uh, election cycle and start talking about the issues that people recognize are, are such a problem right now. You know, uh, our uh, my colleague Melanie Zanona is reporting that uh, there is such tension among House Republicans that many of them aren't even going to a retreat that's going to happen at the end of this week. Is, is that tension part of why you're leaving so abruptly? I, I think this place is dysfunctional. For example, I am the, the number third ranking member of the Judiciary Committee. I haven't even asked my questions yet. Forty, fifty people have gone before me. But that, that could be personal. With, with well, it, it could respect. be personal, but, but, it, but a lot of this is personal. And that's the problem. Instead of having decorum, instead of uh, operating in a professional manner, this place has just evolved into this bickering and, and nonsense and not, not really doing the job for the American people. How much uh, of the fact that you are uh, leaving March 22nd, next Friday, how much does that have to do with uh, the fact that Trump is the presumptive nominee and you're not exactly a fan? Well, I don't think, uh, whether he was the nominee or not, um, I, I think our system is broken in, in how we choose candidates, and I want to get involved in that process. Is it really that miserable right now to be, I mean, from the outside in, it doesn't look that fun. From the inside in, is it that bad that you're saying... I'm done. It is the, the worst year of the nine years and three months that I've been in Congress. Um, and having talked to former members, it's the worst year in 40, 50 years uh, to be in Congress. But, but I'm leaving because I think there's a job to do out there that, that I want to go do. Anybody that you want to fill your seat? I, I have not gotten involved in that, and, and I'm going to stay out of it. And there's a primary in Colorado at the end of June? June 25th is the primary election in Colorado, right? And that, okay. Uh, Does it matter? In 2018, we had the House, we had the Senate, we had the White House, and we had a bigger majority than we have today, and we utterly failed to secure the border. Totally dropped the ball, didn't do it. Why? I remember why. They would say, Chip, we don't have 60 votes in the Senate. Let me be very clear to the American people back home, there is always an excuse for why those who campaign to come to this town fail to deliver. Always. Here's a glimpse into what we will be funding next week. Here's a glimpse into what your members of Congress, both sides of the aisle, led by radical progressive Democrats, who, by the way, you will get more votes out of them than you do out of Republicans. Every bill we have passed over the last four or five months of consequence have had more Democrat votes than Republican votes. Let's be very clear. That's the truth. You can't hide from the truth can't hide behind rules votes, can't hide behind pointing fingers. This institution, the Republicans that run it, we are giving the ability for bills to come off this floor with more Democrat votes filled with radical progressive Democrats who want to remake America than Republican votes. The last bill, the first half of this omnibus spending bill that spends at Nancy Pelosi's levels, no, I'm sorry, more than Nancy Pelosi's spending levels, cracking the caps that we passed less than a year ago, that legislation passed I think with only two Democrats voting against it. Two. Do you know who is in the Democratic Party? Two voted no. While they're starting to vote now on whether to ban TikTok, uh, after Marjorie Taylor Greene and some of the other clowns have spoken, Joe Scarborough this morning went through a list of uh, the, the attributes needed to be a member of Trump's inner circle. A liar, a cheat, and uh, now a two-faced buffoon, I think you can add to that list. I mean, just because Trump isn't the brightest bulb in the room, and that's saying it lightly, uh, the fact that he can bring people on with a fire hose of falsehoods, uh, falsehoods with no consequences, and people begin to catch on to it, and Willie, he's creating a bench. 
He's creating a bench of liars, of cheats, of election deniers that are serving in Congress. Look at the Republican response to the State of the Union. That was the, the direct descendant of Donald Trump's doctrine, which is lie and then lie about the lie and then lie three times over and create another distraction over here. And most of your following will just think you're tough and believe what you say just because it's funny or it's compelling, but they're not connected with the history of our country anymore. They're on a completely different level and it's a level that's a dangerous direction. Good move. Oh. On which I was campaigning for Congress. Tiny violin. And using my free speech to inform the voters in my district they can vote for me. She this holds that light. By a company owned by China. This was by American owned Twitter. This came on the heels of our own United States government working with big tech and working with social media companies to censor and ban Americans free speech. But Trump was in charge at the time. This bill can cause future problems. It's opening Pandora's box and I'm opposed to this bill. Most Americans don't trust the United States government because of our experience dealing with it. Not true. Never forget that the United States government also was the one that provided the Russia hoax to Americans. <laughs> what has this got to do with TikTok? But you're speaking now. ...has worked in so many ways to illegally warrantless spy on Americans through FISA. If we wanted to be serious about stopping a foreign adversary... We'd ban you. If we wanted to be serious about stopping China, we would stop China from buying our U.S. farmland. We would, we would raise up our American energy independence. We would also stop the Green New Deal and not rely on China, who owns and operates 85% Come on! Market worldwide. There are dangers that lie ahead in this. This is really about controlling Americans' data. Yes. And if we cared about Americans' data, then we would stop the sale of Americans' data universally, not just. Well, we wouldn't sell it to uh, political parties who want to use it for their own benefit. This is a Pandora's box. Yes. What Oh, so now Elon Musk is giving money to the Trump campaign. That's what she's getting at. Oh. Oh. Poor you. Yep. Well, we can never forget January the 6th. But have you Googled the pipe bomber Marge? Americans and many teenagers believe awful things and they don't just see them on TikTok. They, they see them on your Instagram. blue tick Twitter accounts. I don't think this will accomplish what the goal is to accomplish. No. So there's other concerns I think here is that when the government moves into forcing the sale of, of uh, TikTok, who Okay, Marge. That's the question that we should be asking. Is it? I feel like a hot chocolate. <laughs> Marshmallows, Marge. Mm. I certainly don't. By the way, most of the time, my posts on Facebook are shadow banned. Well, they're rubbish, Marge. Boring. I think that there's many other ways to protect data, and I think that this body is capable of it. It can be so the breaking news, you can see that the vote to ban TikTok has happened. Obviously, it's not going to happen overnight because ByteDance, who own TikTok, is quite a complicated scenario and situation. But um, the wills 
uh, have been put in motion. What is going to be interesting, two things, whether this will now give uh, an administration the right to stop other social media outlets if they choose, or whether any uh, foreign international companies, or foreign international countries by the way, will follow suit in terms of whether they will ban TikTok as well. Uh, I think this is a developing story for quite a while, but this is the moment where the votes, you can see, it was almost unanimous. Like really big, big margin between the yeas and the nays.